joining me. Today I want to show you how to do the zebra stripe effect. This is still a really popular look on cakes, cupcakes, little gum paste pieces and whatnot. So today I'm going to show you how easy it is to get a couple of different um, options on how to get it on the cake. So what I've got here, I'm working with the home size mat which does have the markings but I flipped it over so you, you can see that there. You can see the markings here but I flipped it over so that you can see it a little bit more clearly from the clear side. So over here I've got the mini mat which is just a little cutting mat of the same material. It's a BPA free uh, food safe mat. So I keep two pieces both on the home size mat for the fondant and then also on the pieces that I'm cutting out. And that allows me some time to cut out those pieces in the shapes that I need and then apply them to the cake how I want them without it all drying out. So that's a really great bonus. And I've just got some black pieces and I went ahead and started cutting out some of these. And these are just kind of random pieces. They're typically kind of V-shaped, wedge-shaped, and Y-shaped. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of a wedge shape. And keeping in mind the size of my fondant, I don't want to make these too large if I'm using a small piece of fondant. If, think of it like you're tiling a bathroom. If you've got a small space, you're gonna use smaller size tiles. And if you've got a bigger space, you're gonna use bigger size tiles. So think of that if you're working on a tiny piece like a cupcake or a little purse or a shoe, something like that. You're gonna to wanna to cut nice thin pieces. And if you're using a big piece of fondant to cover a big piece of cake, you're gonna use wider stripes. So just keep that in mind while you're cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and cut a large wedge or a V shape like that. And then I'm gonna notch it out just like this. And I can still use that little piece too, but this little Y shape here is what's gonna give us some, some nice zebra striped options. I can peel back the top sheet of the mat. And if you haven't seen this before, I invite you to go look at that video too on the mat itself. It's quite a unique tool. So here I've got an example of one of my Ys. So I'll just pull this piece out and I can still use that. And then I'm gonna apply this as well. Now what I like also is this sticks to my fingers just a little bit, so it tends to do a little bit of a flare here at the end, which really makes it look a lot more natural. So don't worry about it if it's sticking to your fingers just a bit. Okay, so here I've got a piece that's a little bit longer than it needs to be to fit in, so I can just simply pull off the end there, and then that still looks great there. This little piece I can use in a little place too. I'll just stick this one over here. Once I've got all these pieces in place, I'm gonna roll them one more time inside the mat so that they're all flush and it's, it seems like it's one seamless piece of fondant and that's gonna be a really great effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll the top sheet of my mat back down and you'll see that as I was applying these, they were all in the same direction. So it's kind of like little fish swimming up a stream and you wanna make sure that that stays in that nice straight pattern. Keeping that in mind, when I roll these into the other piece of fondant, the base piece of fondant, I'm just going to roll in that direction, just like those little fish are swimming upstream, okay? So instead of making them wider and rolling this way, they're just going this way. So just a firm bit of pressure across, and you'll just do this a couple of times. You don't wanna make them too wide, but you wanna make sure that they're getting embedded down into that fondant, and they will widen a little bit so make sure you're giving them a little bit of space in between. So now I'm gonna show you how to get this off of the mat and onto the actual cake. So I'm gonna flip it over so that the pattern side is down because that's the side that's gonna be shown. And then I'm just gonna peel what is now the top sheet off. All right, I'm just gonna set that aside. And this is sticking pretty nicely to the other side of the mat. So what I'm gonna do now is just pick this up, flip it over onto the cake and now the pattern side is showing. So I'm just gonna peel this off, pull a little bit taut, and it falls right off. Really, really easy method to use. If you've, again, if you've not seen that matte video, I suggest you go look at that. That's a really great piece. So that's one way to get the zebra stripe onto the cake. You can go ahead and finish applying it as you normally would a regular piece of fondant. Now I'm gonna show you a really another cute method. It has a little bit of bling to it as far as just applying those zebra stripes onto a cake that's already covered. So down here, I'm using the mini mat again, and I'm just gonna peel this top part back, and I'm gonna use some clear piping gel, and I'm just gonna use a nice uh, pastry brush or a, a, a wide bristle brush. Really light coat on here. It doesn't need to be thick at all, or it's gonna be kind of sticky and gummy to work with. So I'm just gonna brush this all over and really spread that out. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black sanding sugar and I'm just gonna sprinkle that kind of lightly, just a nice even coat all over, trying not to waste too much on the edges. But you can always pick any excess up and put it back in your bottle as long as it's not 
having the piping gel in there. So I'm going to go back to cutting the zebra stripes the same way I did in the first part of it. So I'm just going to stick to where my um, sanding sugar is and cut those same shapes out. Little V's, Y's, wedges, that sort of thing. And what I'm going to do is just pick my stripes up. This does get a little bit messy, so if you have to go back and cut more stripes, you're going to want to wipe this mat down for yourself so it's not sticky and icky. So all I'm going to do is put my sanding sugar coated zebra stripe in my hand, flip it over really gently, give a little bit of brush of piping gel on the back. This is going to be my glue. And then I'm just going to apply it to the cake. And see how much bling that adds? Let me do one more for you there. And then I'll show you the two different methods side by side so that you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, a little bit of glue on there. And we're just going to Put that side by side just like that and then you can go around all around the sides and if you have a cake stacked on top of this one you don't have to do that area and what this is going to do for you by applying it to the cake instead of rolling it on or you can have one smooth stripe of zebra striping this way and if you're looking at it this way it's going to be more rounded so that your stripes are going up all around the cake so it's just a little bit of a different effect this is a really great way to achieve some bling but i think you can see how easy it is to put zebra stripes on a cake so if you're going to put it on your cake cookies cupcakes whatever i think you're going to have a lot of fun with it thanks for watching <laughs>